My son and I started uh, the Elevator Brewing Company in Marysville in 1999. Uh, we weren't selling a lot of beer, so we came here to the restaurant in 2000 and opened up this facility, and we kept the elevator name. It's Elevator Brewing and Draft House. We're in our present location here at 165 North 4th, and the building itself is 102 years old. And we moved from Marysville, where we had most of the equipment, but half the size. So we have 5,400 square feet here now, so it's twice the size we had in Marysville. And it brings us very close to our brewery, or our, our brew pub. But we have uh, 10 fermenters. Um, we have a 15-barrel brew house, uh, which means that our 30-barrel fermenters over here, we can brew twice into them, double batch brew some of our important beers. Behind me is a 60-barrel tank, and we can brew four times into that. It's a nice facility, although we're growing out of space already because we started bottling. The bottling requires more space to set pallets of bottles around. So we're looking at expanding maybe into the building next door. But it's because we are somewhat successful in the market now and got some market penetration, we've got four seasonal beers and four regular beers in the market right now. Plus, many of the draft beers we don't put in bottles, we still sell uh, out in the market. So. It's been a beautiful facility for us. I'm close to the restaurant, I'm close to my brewers. One of our latest projects is barrel aging beer, which happens to be a growing segment within the craft beer industry uh, of aging beer in whiskey barrels and bourbon barrels. The barrels, I've uh, been getting them from Louisville, Kentucky. Past years I've been getting early times. Uh, this year we went ahead and ended up getting some Woodford Reserve barrels. Uh, these are uh, select barrels, they're master distiller select, they're rye whiskey barrels, one time use only, which is important, that gives you a lot of flavor from the wood. The more they use it, the less flavor you get from the wood. We're now thinking of having a barrel aged series all year long next year, and, and not only doing one barrel aged beer, but four barrel aged beers. You get a little bit of the whiskey that's still stuck in the wood, and when that whiskey seeps out of the wood, it goes into your beer, you might get another extra percent, one and a half percent alcohol in your beer. Plus, it gives you a great wood flavor, uh, vanilla and caramel, chocolatey flavors, and then, of course, the little bit of a uh, grain alcohol flavor, which is really good, too. The building we're in, uh, the history of this building, it, it starts uh, in 1897. It opened as Bott Brothers Cigars and Billiards. The front round windows uh, that faced the street were filled with merchandising. They sold a lot of cigars, and, and they sold barbacks and billiard tables. So consequently, we have this beautiful 48-foot long bar back here, Philippine Mahogany. This is the original bar. Upstairs, we had the pool hall. At that point, it was a billiard hall, uh, very large. Stained glass in the front of the building and way at the rear is original to the building as part of the history. If you look down, you'll see a, a mosaic tile floor, and this is original to the building. Uh, it's, it's been here forever. There's divots in it, and we don't do anything with them. Um, so that's all original. When my son and I took over the building, it was vacant. I repainted the ceiling, our company colors, blue and silver. It took me over a month on a scaffolding. I felt like Michelangelo. It really gave it a nice new feeling, especially with the blue neon at night popping off the silver. So I was trying to create a little wall factor when people came in. There is a very large painting, five by 12 in the back, and that painting depicts uh, what the pool hall on the second floor looked like uh, at the turn of the century. The food here at the elevator is generally four-star quality food, and we knew from the beginning that we didn't want to just have pub food. Our signature uh, featured dish is called the rock filet, and this is a seven-inch hand-trimmed filet that's brought to you after you've had your salad. It's brought to you on a, a hot soapstone, and you, you cook it at table side. We keep those stones in the oven at 450 degrees, in a convection oven, when they're ordered, we bring them out, we put your steak on it, and they bring it out to the table. And as it's coming out, you can see it, you can hear it, and you can smell it. So three of your senses are going as, it's, as it is being delivered to you. And it's quite an experience because you cook at a table side, there's dipping sauces, several made with beer, 
and uh, I just think that adds to the experience of, of, of being here. My responsibilities are everything ordering, making sure we got everything we need to make beer, driving the brewers, the production guys, the bottling guys, making sure the beer is always right. All the beers here are mine except for two of them. Uh, the Doppelbach, which is old school before I got here, and the Hefeweizen, which is also an old school beer. That's still original, but everything else is my beer. The Flying Hydra Light, it's a light lager. It's like a go-to for anybody who asks for like a Bud Light or Coors Light, any type of light beer. Extra, that's more of a step up, more like a Kolsch. Uh, it's light, like the light, but it's got definitely some more flavor to it. Mugabe, it's a hoppy wheat ale. It's filtered, it's American style wheat, it's uh, slightly hoppy, it's got a little grapefruit note to it. Pale Ale, it's a pretty hoppy beer, popular in the summertime, kind of like a Sierra Nevada. IPA, it's a step up hoppiness from the Pale Ale, similar, uh, a little more floral. Buckeye Red Ale, it's uh, amber ale, a lot like a Killian's, Nut Brown Ale. It's uh, similar in Newcastle, a little nuttier more chocolate. Dark Horse Lager, that's my personal favorite. It's uh, one of our darker beers, but it's got a real light body. It's kind of deceiving. Doppelbach, it's uh, another one of my favorites. It's uh, really dark, heavy, high alcohol, chocolatey, coffee. Really dark, heavy, rich beer. We have several beer programs here, an MBA program and a PhD program where we have different beers each month. And I mean, we brew a beer a different beer just for each one of those programs. So it's always exciting to try the new beers that we come out with. The MBA program I mentioned is, uh, it's called Masters of Beer Appreciation. We offer one distinctive brew each month, all month long, and they're all different. So you'll come in and get a card. It costs you nothing to sign up. It's about the size of a credit card. We punch your card. At the end of that time, you get a big certificate. It looks like a college diploma uh, from the College of Beer and um, we've had a lot of fun with it. The PhD program came about because we had so many people that had multiple MBA degrees. So finally we came up with an advanced degree PH, uh, PhD program, which is Professor of Hardy Drinking. And we brew another 12 beers on this brewing system right behind me. Uh, it's a three and a half hectare liter bear pond from Germany. And uh, we, can, we do brewing here. Uh, it, it's not a production facility, but it, we can brew small batches of uh, experimental, experimental beers. And uh, this year they got a big uh, paddle, looks like a fraternity paddle, with all the beers they drank listed on them. And I forgot to mention the MBA people get a 25 ounce mug, a uh, pretty good sized mug, they get it filled up uh, at a 16 ounce price for life. <laughs>